Support. I'm here with the see we're not calling this one the project Humvee battle wagon this is the battle wagon 2.0 it's an AM general M 1045 a2 Humvee and I thought I'd give you a quick tour since uh, we've done a lot to it since it showed up but haven't posted any uh, videos yet so here we go this is where I pick up the Humvee Hey, GearHeads, Jeff with your report here at the um, auction storage facility to pick up the Battlewagon 2.0. This is the very first time I am seeing it. I see it sitting here where they brought it up for us to pick it up. So here's a big reveal. Let me show you what it looks like. There we go. They said I uh, cannot go anywhere else around here unescorted, but since this one's mine, I am allowed to come over here and look at it. I already got my paperwork to pick it up. I'll tell you folks, it's killing me to not run up there and start climbing in it. I want to give you guys a good view real quick before I start messing with anything. I didn't bad. It actually stays up. Put all this up here. That's where the turret's gonna go. Oh yeah, start box is gone. Should be up there. A little love. I think it needs a lot of love.
All right, let's start with it like this with the hood open. Why not, right? So you can see the Ibis Tech low profile protective bumper with the brush guard folded forward, right? We have to do that to clear the headlights. So this is just hinged and you see uh, if we didn't fold it down, then the hood would hit it. And this is a six inch thick bumper. It's not the typical Ibis Tech that you see um, I love it. I think it's about perfect for my needs. Uh, some people may think it's not big and hardy enough. This is aluminum. It's not steel, so it keeps it a little bit lighter. Uh, maybe makes it a little less sturdy, but you know, the idea is not to go around ramming things with it. It's just to give a little bit of kind of sacrificial protection in the front so that if we bump into something, you know, the bumper gets bent and not the rest of the truck. All right, so when we got the hood open, you can see we got the air filter. I put a four inch extension on top so that we could get this little mushroom on here. It's supposed to have the tall fording stack that comes up and attaches right here, which would put this mushroom up about that high. But uh, I don't have that fording stack at the moment, so that's how that is installed. It was missing when we got the truck, which is why the engine didn't run. Rainwater got in that open hole filled up this entire air filter housing. When it got full enough that it crested this little peak, then the water started running down into the intake, down through the intake manifold to where it filled up the cylinders. Uh, and there were actually, geez, it was probably a gallon and a half, two gallons of water that came out from underneath. We've got the serpentine belt system in here. This is just a, kind of a, a, a blank pulley where if we had an air conditioner that would be attached here. Uh, the air conditioning compressor rather would be attached there. But since we don't have air conditioning, that is uh, just a dummy pulley. You can see the power steering pump, uh, power steering reservoir there because it has the top mounted pump. And I think the, uh, I think the sun going down over there is messing with our ability to focus. Uh, being an A2 truck, an M1045A2, we have the heavy duty 12,000 pound suspension as opposed to, what is it, 7,500 pounds for a typical Humvee, 10,000 for the, for the A1s, and then the A2s have the heavier A-arms and springs and uh, 12K shafts, and then you'll see these little, uh, I don't know if that's like a I think it's a little armor piece, you know, not not like bulletproof armor, but uh, a protective piece to to block what's behind it. So, anyhow, not really sure about that. That's what we have here. You can see this is a engine that was replaced when the uh, vehicle went through uh, Iron, the inspect repair only as needed, I R O A N, something like that. Um, in the 2007 reset and you can see the injection pump that was recently rebuilt by diesel care and performance thank you very much for that uh, it runs fantastic now um, here you see one of the hood bumpers that we replaced the center one and then both of the ones on the side were dry rotted as well so this and the one on the other side i have a new reservoir pump for the windshield washer that I have not installed yet, so this doesn't actually work at the moment. And uh, on the opposite side, the little spray nozzle was missing as well, so I put a new one of those right here. Um, on the front, we had to put uh, windshield wiper arms and blades because both of those uh, arms were missing. That one actually needs adjusted. It's a little too vertical. I need to pull it off and angle it over a little more. On top, you see the fun part where we have the full turret assembly. I don't have the riser or UPA or machine gun mount or chicken shield on it right now because it's heavy and I didn't want to get it out of the garage. You can see the hatch is open. All right. Also got a new set of mirrors and put on here, brand new mirrors. This one was broken, the other side was not, but uh, just went ahead and got tan ones to put on there. Uh, when the truck came in, it did not have doors. You can see a set of supplemental armor doors on here now. And I also installed some locking latches in them. Supplemental armor doors have the 5 8 inch thick ballistic glass and it has a real bad problem with delamination. So you can see 
funkiness in between the layers of glass that is really difficult to see through. So if you have some 5 8 inch supplemental armor doors replacement glass that you would part with, let me know. I need some. I also put a new, uh, not new, I had a spare start switch that I swapped in because this one would get kind of stuck on and come on when it wanted to. Uh, we have a M16 barrel clamp here and then down on the floor you see the high beam switch and then this is where the butt stock of an M16 goes so then the barrel comes up and clamps in there. Being an A2, we have the newer style turn signal assembly with the cancel ring, although the, the cancel ring is missing the little post that come out the bottom to cancel it, so it actually doesn't cancel by itself, but it's got the larger steering wheel. We had this in the original Battle Wagon as well, and I think it is, it, it's really silly how much more comfortable the thicker A2 steering wheel is than the thin original. Um, gauges, some of them have some water behind the lens that makes them fog up. They're actually looking pretty clear right now. This one I had to replace. It uh, was not showing temperature, but put a new gauge in and it uh, works great now. Little uh, cell phone holder that is suction cup to the windshield. Another neat thing about A2s is you are usually gonna have sun visors. Yeah, it seems like, you know, seriously, do you get excited about that? But yeah, when you drive the first gen trucks that don't have them for a while and then you get in one that has visors you can put down so you're not blinded it makes a big difference uh, support ring is something that I had to acquire and uh, you know uh, cleaned it up and painted it uh, uh, 686 desert tan as well as you know the three-piece lock and ring the K bar which I actually painted I thought this was going to be the top side. I just got that backwards, so I need to spray the bottom of it. Uh, but yeah, the, the whole turret assembly was uh, cleaned up and uh, pretty much refurbished, repainted, so it all looked nice. It's a new locking handle, uh, new pads here, one and two. They weren't too bad. You get those at Cascar. Uh, I got three little latches up there that uh, hold it closed. And then we got the little... Uh, things like this right here and then the one on the other side is all right where is it there so you can put a sling in for whoever's sitting up there to stand in uh, they'll be standing on this gunner's platform that can be raised up it's in the lowest position now you can uh, pull this pin here and raise it up so if there's a short person standing in the turret and they need you know to be a little higher you can do that there's the traversing unit mount. I honestly don't know what that's for. Um, the seats, uh, with no doors on this truck when we got it, it had been sitting outside and the seats had deteriorated pretty bad. So I got these dicky seat covers just to cover up what was there and give me some time to figure it out. Um, I've actually got, I think, full set of replacement seats now. So I may even take these tan covers off, but that's a brand new high back seat that I just took the plastic off and installed a couple weeks ago. This is a fairly new one that I had uh, from the old truck. Uh, I had a couple spare seats from the old truck, so I'm likely gonna put those in back here. These are the original seats just with those Dickies covers over them. What else is different here? In an A2 truck, you'll have these kind of vents that you can spin around. So you can point it kind of up or down at your feet or you know, point it, maybe point it forward so it gets your feet warmer. Uh, we got the throttle lock. So if you're using the um, generator for something, uh, you know, running radios or whatever, you know, you can, you can set it at a little higher level so you have plenty of power. Uh, being a US Marine Corps truck, it does have the deep fording kit. Uh, installed so this is normal driving and if you're going through really deep water you move it over to the deep fort setting we got an article on what the deep fording stuff is all about I actually do have a little placard to tell you you can only go 55 miles an hour uh, which is interesting I've had this one up to 75 uh, as a newer truck the A2 has this uh, type of emergency brake or parking brake that that you actually push the button to unlatch it um, I like that so you, it's harder to knock it loose by accident clearly we got the four-speed transmission with the uh, overdrive here that was the whole impetus for 
for getting this. Um, same type of controls for the windshield wipers as we had in the first generation truck. Another difference we have with the A2 trucks is a different uh, heater housing in front of the passenger. So we don't have the holes up here with the, the slits in them that you would slide open for vents. Instead, um, there's a vent right here, a little round vent for the passenger. And then, you know, we saw the driver's vent on the other side. And then there and here are where you get the air for defrosting the windshield. There we go. We did have to put a new C-pillar in. That's what you see going across here. This is a reproduction unit that I got from Ryan. And it mostly fit. There was a little bit of binding right up in this area where I had to hammer on it to make it fit right. But uh, it generally fit reasonably well. And I have an original C-pillar. If anyone needs one, let me know. That's going to be for sale. Um, the hatch, you can actually unlatch right here and open it up that direction so it stands straight up. Or you can go outside and lift the handle and open the hatch from the back side. And under these moving blankets and net are some foam, but also some of the original brackets for things like the uh, parts of the different tow missile system. And these black boxes up here are something about batteries for the, for the tow miss missile system as well. So lots of kind of neat little things still in place, ammo can holders and ration holders and that kind of thing. All right, what else we got here? So in the back, I uh, actually put my cup holder here. It's supposed to be for an antenna, and you'd use uh, this type of antenna base to put on it. But I didn't want to put one here because when we're at the shooting range, I'll put my coffee cup in there. So it makes a great cup holder. You can see we got LEDs for the tail lights. Those are groats, and then the side marker lights are truck lights. We put an A2 rear bumper on here the airlift bumper thanks to Ruben at damage control customs who sent us these um, mud flaps to go along with the uh, airlift bumper kit that I got from him so I purchased the kit with the brackets and he kicked this in for a little promotional consideration um, and I already had the inner brackets uh, we've got the pinball hitch here this is a uh, pinball is you know pintle on top and then the two inch ball mount that, that goes here. Um, honestly, I don't see me putting a receiver hitch mount in there and using a towing ball to tow something. Um, more than likely what I'll do is use that for a hitch rack. So if I wanna have a cooler sitting back here, I can put the rack out the back and set it on there. Um, we've got the, the green are the plates that, uh, that Nick fabricated for me to hold the Ibis Tech swing out tire carrier. So you see that here. We got a 165 pound tire sitting on there. And what's really cool about this one, if I can get the camera in here far enough, this is a half inch um, hex head that sticks out. You put a half inch socket on it and you uh, spin it one way and it raises this whole assembly. You spin it the other and it lowers it. So, um, you, know, you don't have a big ratchet assembly. You just put it on there and crank your tire up and down so you don't have to lift it. This is the handle I was talking about. If you want to open the hatch, we lift up on that and the hatch comes open. All right, what else have we got here? We already talked about the LEDs, the bumper, the mud flaps. We talked about the doors. There's our traversing unit. More looking at the inside. On the ceiling, you'll notice we have just residue where the insulation used to be and sticky stuff hanging down where, where there used to be insulation. Uh, as soon as we get the insurance stuff sorted out, we're gonna take this down to Coolmat. Uh, they make insulation for race cars and, and similar. And they're gonna use the Battlewagon 2.0 as their template to make insulation kits for Humvees. So we'll have new insulation to go in the top and we'll also have insulation to go uh, probably on the bottom side of this tunnel and down in the footwell areas and you know other places where heat comes through and bothers the occupants. That should help quite a bit 
with uh, heat and sound inside. You can see we already have the, the stock little insulation uh, mats down in the footwell, but uh, we'll probably pull those out and put better insulation under them. Oh, and the seat belts. That's something else that's different in here from the other Humvee. So it is a three-point seat belt, but you'll notice this has two clips that go in. So the waist belt comes around. And then where's the shoulder belt? There it is. Shoulder belt comes down. There we go. So there we go. So if for whatever reason they needed only one or the other, then they could do that, I guess. I don't know. So this is the newer style seat belts. That's it. There's our quick tour. Um, we've seen up here with the, uh, the hatch open. The hatch is sitting right up here. So we can close that if we want. And there's the latches around there to hold it shut. That right there is the lock. So when you lift that up, the whole turret assembly spins around. It's people powered. There's no, no motors, no gears, just uh, a grab handle up top. So you spin it if you want to. The way around here. Or if we set this still, then you can see we've got a little handle here you can use. And then spin it all the way around. That can hit. Yep, that's gonna hit. There we go. So no motors, no cranks. Here we go. In the center console, we've got a Blue Force Tracker console that is going to go in here shortly. Uh, for now, though, we just got this little Rubbermaid tray. It's like ten dollars. There's a, we got a link on uh, in in the Humvee section of our Amazon store to where you can get that. I think shipped. It's less than ten dollars, and it just sits there. It gives you a couple places for drinks and pens and tire gauges and flashlights, whatever else you need. We don't have any interior light in here at the moment. I've got a uh, light force LED that will go in a military housing somewhere in here. I haven't figured out where to put that yet. And then probably right up here on the dash will be a little seven inch uh, screen for the rear view cameras. I'll show you where those are gonna go. I've already got these holes here on each side. There's one here. And then the other one right here. I'll enlarge those a little bit and slide a little camera in each side so I'll have two backup cameras, uh, which is good because there's no rear view mirror. You can't see anything through this at all. Backing up, you've got your, uh, your side mirrors. That's all you have. So it would be nice to have the cameras giving us a little better view of what's behind. So anyhow, that's what we're doing for now. I've got some more uh, RAM mounts to put in here for cup holders and phone holders that I uh, haven't got around to yet. We've got a black rack uh, secure weapon storage to hold two ARs that I haven't figured out where to mount yet. Lots of other goodies to go in here. Uh, we've got to put the 24 to 12 volt converter under the seat with the batteries on the other side. Once we get that in, then we've got some uh, Cobra sent some radios to put in and uh, Cobra also sent, we'll have up here in the windshield, a driving camera and it'll have an interior and exterior view of the driving camera. So we're going to have lots of goodies in here. Let us know what questions you have and uh, we'll get to answer those as soon as we can. Replace the voltage regulator on the, uh, on the generator here. That was uh, pretty fortunate that uh, the, the replacement unit that I found pretty cheap actually worked so that that solved a big problem anyhow that's it for now let us know what questions you have and we'll see you at the range